parallax scrolls have been a hallmark of modern web design, bringing websites to life and turning a simple design into a premium website. So I too created my own 3D parallax horizontal scroll effect where this Coke can can travel from the first page to the final one, going through all the headings and reaching its place as the first product. So when you scroll back up, it goes back across all the pages and reaches its starting position. It's also dynamic, so you can add the Coke can to your cart and place an order. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how exactly I made it. Follow me step by step as I guide you through the entire process. From setting up the layout to applying the GSAP code that makes the effect work. By the end, you will have a fully functional dynamic 3D parallax horizontal scroll effect that will take your website to the next level. Let's jump in. First, we need to set up the main container. I am adding a full width container to the page. As this design is going to scroll horizontally, I'll set the direction to this so that all container elements are laid out horizontally. Now let's adjust the height to 100 VH so it fills the entire screen. To keep things clean, I'll set the gaps between rows and columns to zero and I'll turn off the wrapping. This ensures everything stays in place without spilling over to other sections. I'll set the overflow to hidden so nothing goes outside the container. And lastly, let's make the padding zero and assign the container the CSS class wrapper. This will make styling much easier later. Now that the main container is ready, let's add some slides. But before that, whenever I do some design work for my clients, I make sure to add this free plugin called Airlift because, um, okay, let me actually show you this. So that's my site speed before and that's after. It does a lot of optimizations automatically and keeps things fast. So you should definitely try this and I'll leave the link in the description below. I'm adding another full width container inside the main container. The height stays at 100 VH and I'll align and justify the content to the center so everything looks neat and balanced. Padding stays at zero here as well. To make this container flexible, I'll set the size to grow. Let's name this slide so that we can keep a track of it. All right, um, I'll duplicate this container two more times to create a total of three slides. All right, let's style the first slide. For the background, I am picking a bold color to make it pop. Next, I'll add a heading right in the center. Let's call this one Coca-Cola. I'll style it using the Loki Cola 2 font. The size will be 420 pixels, huge and eye-catching. Let's set the weight to 500 and make the color white so it stands out against the background. To add a little depth, I'll apply a subtle text shadow like this. Now we need to position the heading. In the advanced tab, I'll set it to absolute positioning and align it 10% from the left and 28% from the top. To make sure it doesn't get hidden behind other elements, I'm giving it Z index of 5. For some extra flair, I'm adding a rounded text image to this slide, which will rotate as we scroll. Let's grab an image widget, click on upload image, and upload this circular text PNG, and set the width to 20%. Then in the advanced tab, I'll position it absolutely, minus 17% from the right, and 4% from the top. To prepare it for animations later, I'll assign it to the CSS class named Image Circular Rotate. All right, moving on to the second slide. For this one, I want the background to have a gradient that transitions smoothly from the first slide's color to black. I'm setting the first color to red and the second to black with the gradient starting at 3% and ending at 24%. The angle will be 90 degrees so the gradient flows vertically. To make sure there are no gaps between the slides, I'll add minus 2 pixel margin on the left. Now let's add some content to it. I'm adding a heading right in the center. Below that, I'll add a second headline for additional text. Finally, I'll add a button below the text and style the button to make it stand out. For some consistency from the first section, I'll copy the circular image from the first slide and reuse it here. Let's finish off this slide with a divider. I'm setting it to solid, adjusting the width to 
and aligning it to the left. The color will be white with a weight of 2 pixel. In the advanced tab, I'll position it absolute. Offset it by minus 24% horizontally and 79% vertically and rotate it 70 degrees using the transform tool. Finally, on to the third slide. I'll set the background color to black again and uh, keep the direction forward horizontal. Just like the second slide, I'm adding a minus 2 pixel margin on the left. I'm adding a heading right in the center and give it the CSS class name image move right. I'll also set its Z in text to 0. Inside this slide, I'm adding another container and aligning it to the center. I'll set padding from the top and bottom to 50 and give it a Z index of 1. Inside this container, I'll add an image widget, head to the library and upload this Coca-Cola image. Set the width to 50%. To make it interactive, I'll add a hover effect by adjusting the transform scale from 1 to 1.1. Below the image, I'm adding a heading for the product title, then another heading for the price. Both will be styled to match the theme. To wrap this section, I'll add a button and link it to the product's WooCommerce page. I'll grab the link from the WooCommerce dashboard, paste it into the button's link field. Also, make sure you enable this Open in New tab option and style the button to make it stand out. To complete the slide, I'll duplicate the container twice, updating the images, text and links for each product. And once it's done, it should look something like this. Now select the first image and set the image opacity to zero. We need to do this as we'll be adding another image that will move from the first section to this section as I showed you earlier. To do that, I'll add another Coca-Cola image here change the width to 43% and set the position to absolute. Now make sure you follow these settings step by step because this is the image that will be sliding from the first to the last section. And don't worry if it's out of view right now. It will work without issues after you set everything up. All right, set the horizontal offset to minus 205%, vertical offset to 7%, scale to 1 and hover scale to 1.1. I'll also give it a Z index to 2 and give it a CSS name rolling image so that it links the code we'll be adding next. Now let's wrap it all up. I'll go back to the main container, make sure the direction is set forward and add one final container at the end. Inside this container, I'll insert an HTML widget and paste the GSAP code linked in the pinned comment below. If anything looks off, you can tweak the code values from here to adjust the animation speed, rotation angle, or even fine tune the layout according to your design. Once everything is updated, I'll review the design to make sure the transitions and scrolling effects are smooth. And there you have it. When you scroll, the Coke can moves from the first section to the last, and you can also click here to add the Coke can in your cart. Click here if you want to 3x your site speed in just one minute. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Click here and I'll see you there.